Well, here we go again, 4 o'clock in your Monday afternoon. I want to thank you for joining us. I'm Tom Green. And I'm Kim Christensen. We're back together again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's get look outside because it's a muggy Monday. Um, you probably felt it in the air and you know that means something because it feels kind of like Florida, maybe a little bit like Chicago for anyone that's been in the Midwest. Just a lot of stuff in the air and it, we've been feeling it for a few days with a lot of storms. Humidity levels always create the perfect combination for afternoon storms to just get cooking. Well, today, day two, really, of the severe storms. Yesterday, Boyd, we see them rolling through yesterday afternoon south of Fair Play. Nina sending us this view. That's Highway 285 under all that hail. You can see how deep it was on the road as people were trying to get by. And in Parker, well, flooding an issue there, too. A lot of rain mixed with hail raging down the streets. Many places saw a good amount of rain mixed in with that hail. The slow-moving storms caused flash flooding. And they'll be a concern for us again today. And South Metro Fire says three homes were hit by lightning. One of them caught on fire. The people in the home were able to get out safely. The fire started in the attic and part of the roof collapsed. It took about an hour to get that fire under control, in part because of the conditions. Rain completely washed away a trail entrance in Castle Rock. The town says there are now some closures on the East Plum Creek Trail. The trail is closed north of Festival Park and south of Kinner Street until those repairs can be made. All right, we're trying to get a good look at what is happening with the storms outside. We're going to check in with meteorologist Corey Repenhagen, who is out chasing. Chasing those storms again. Uh, Corey, you're driving on the west side of the metro near Boulder. Tell us what you're seeing. Yeah, we're keeping an eye on some pretty big potential for some nasty thunderstorms moving into the Denver metro area. The first one that's popped in our area happened in the Boulder County foothills. You can kind of see it right off to the left of your screen there. Quite a bit of heavy rain. That's looking straight up Coal Creek Canyon right now. So Coal Creek Canyon's probably, you saw that lightning strike there. That's going to be another threat that we have today. Heavy rain falling in Coal Creek Canyon right now. This storm actually did pop some pretty good size hail, not severe hail, but quite a bit of hail up Boulder Canyon when it first popped there just to the west of Boulder. So this is the type of a uh, storm that could be moving into the Denver Metro. They're using the slope of the Front Range foothills right now to get some lift, but there is just enough energy down here in the Denver Metro area to maintain these storms. So we're going to keep an eye on them as they move off of the foothills into the Denver Metro area because we have the potential not only for some large hail, but the main potential would be those heavy, heavy rains that could cause some street flooding and also we're watching quite a bit of lightning coming out of this storm right now. So Kathy, we're going to keep our eyes on this storm, but I know there's probably going to be a little bit of a wave coming through the metro here in the next couple hours, so I'll throw it back over to you to get some more information on the forecast. Stay safe out there, and thank you for that bird's eye view and boots on the ground for that Boulder County storm. Storms coming off the foothills are turning severe. We have a new severe thunderstorm warning in Weld County. So far, it's dry as evening drive gets underway, but it is muggy. It's humid out there, and that low-level humidity is in part a function of all of the rain for the last couple of days. This is actually day three of severe weather, and that means with rain and saturated soils, it tries to evaporate with the heat of the day and then gets trapped by the layer of clouds. So the humidity and dew point values very high for June in Colorado. Severe storms developing up in Weld County now. We're seeing storm movement from the west toward the east and southeast. Had some issues with flooding in Buena Vista. We've got a flash flood warning out until 5 o'clock there just outside of Pitkin. And then north of Keensburg, we've got a little storm that's coming into Gill. It's outside the town of Alt. It's tracking southeast at 15 miles per hour. And there is a little bit of a hail signature with that cell. So we're watching that one pretty closely and some new thunderstorms. I put on the sweeping radar and we're also starting to see those cells that Corey was talking about coming through Nederland and Boulder. And again, a bit of a hail signature along with thunder and lightning and the potential for torrential rain on saturated soils means some really difficult driving and certainly just some dangerous conditions. So if you're out around Greeley, Gill or up toward the Grover area or headed into southeastern Wyoming, you've got a line of storms there with a lot of rain, ping pong ball size hail possible and some damaging winds and lightning as that line tracks southeast. The storms initially moving very slowly, starting to pick up speed a little bit, which is beneficial. But the town of Greeley, severe thunderstorm warning until 430. Hail certainly 
a potential in and around Alt and northern and northwestern sections of Weld County. Storm movement is toward the southeast from the northwest. And we're in sort of that marginal view for severe weather, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to see that hail and that rain on the saturated soils and see some issues this afternoon. Temperatures warm enough to kind of break that cap and get things going. And the humidity values, while they appear low in Denver, are actually pretty high across eastern Colorado with dew point values, available moisture for storms in the 50s. And so that's something we're tracking. Future cast shows this little cell coming right over Denver here between now and 530. We'll be watching that one. Additional cell development outside of Keensburg and Ray. And so it looks to be an active evening for us, even though we haven't had a lot of activity just yet with the exception of Weld County. So we'll continue to watch the radar and track this for you. And Kim and Tom, we're so happy to have you both back this week. So welcome back. Be back, and it's a great opportunity for many people like myself to stay interested in weather by gambling on the dew point uh, <laughs> at the under over, you know. Oh, where do you want to go? Hey, the Nine News app is a great way to stay in touch. We'll be checking in with Kathy and Corey throughout the hour, but of course, uh, you can also stay in touch by just grabbing the Nine News app, download it for free, of course. Now let's head to a developing story in northern Colorado. We're following a crash that killed one person. It's also closed both directions of I-25, just north of Wellington. This is the backup that we're looking at right now as this crash is causing traffic to just be at a standstill, inching forward in some places. Uh, we're working to learn more information from Colorado State Patrol. We know this happened about 3 o'clock this afternoon. We don't know how many cars were involved. Once we learn more and we learn more about the highway, we'll keep you posted on air and online. Today, the Jefferson County Coroner's Office confirmed to Nine News that one of the people who was hurt in Friday's Arvada plane crash has now died, but that person has not yet been publicly identified. Of course, it was last week that the single-engine plane crash had ended up in a front yard along Oberon Street near Carr. Centennial Airport says the plane took off from there, but was only in the air for less than half an hour before it crashed down on Friday. The NTSB saying there were four people on board as it crashed, two adults, the other two may have been kids. The NTSB says it is still working to try to confirm their age and their relationships. Fire crews said when they got there, the plane was already on fire. The owner of the home explained to us what he saw when he opened his front door. You know, and then to see an aircraft on fire in our front yard, just that was that was unexpected. When I first opened the door, it was just fully engulfed flames, you know, 10, 15 foot in the air right here. It was kind of the nose of it was kind of towards the towards the front of our pickup. Again, we now know that one person died in that crash. The other three people on board are in the hospital in serious condition. The NTSB continuing their investigation with the wreckage now having been moved to Greeley for part of that investigation. One person died and four others were hurt in a crash in Centennial this afternoon. It happened about noon at East Smoky Hill Road and South Liverpool Street. The intersection was closed for three hours during the investigation, just recently reopened. We're working to learn more about what led up to that crash. We'll update you when we learn that news. Two people now in custody following a shooting that involved Denver police officers. It happened sometime before 8.15 this morning. Denver police say this started as a call about a stolen motorcycle near 48th and Jackson, just north of I-70 in Colorado. One officer did fire a shot, but no one was hit or injured. Two suspects were taken into custody. And in national news, the jury now has the case in the trial of the president's son, Hunter Biden. He is facing three charges tied to the possession of a gun while using narcotics. The defense rested its case without Hunter Biden taking the stand. After hearing closing arguments, the case went to the jury, who began deliberations before breaking for the day. If convicted, the president's son could face up to 25 years in jail. Experts say that's unlikely because he would be considered a first-time offender. President Biden has said he will not pardon his son if he's convicted. Today, former President Trump met with his New York City probation officer. The meeting happened virtually, participated in rallies over the weekend. It's also part of a pre-sentencing report after being convicted of 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. The Trump defense team is scheduled to submit their sentencing recommendation on Thursday. Sentencing is set for July 11th. The former president is facing anywhere from probation to up to four years.